How are we doing? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Today we're carrying on with the uh, deconstruction of this electro track I made using Oni Native Instruments Massive. Today I'm going to be showing you, it's quite a simple, uh, I've called it a percussive house bass. Um, it's one of the bassy elements, it's used mainly in the breakdown. You can't really hear it when it's underlined underneath uh, the two vowel-y basses, basses that we did earlier on. But this is the sound on its own. Okay, quite a percussive, uh, normalish house sort of bass. I've got a bit of processing on the channel itself. I'll just talk through that quickly. I've got some Ableton Overdrive aimed right down at the low end. Um, I've got an EQ here cutting anything below 883 Hz. And this center of this is aimed at 81 Hz. So it's only the very tail of this overdrive, this overdrive sort of arc it's almost like a band pass it's only the very tail of this which is going to be affecting the lower part of the sound it's a neat trick to use that curve just to beef up the real bottom part of the sound and i've got um this is one of the waves one knob fatter i'll turn it on and on so you can hear what it does it's off and on just adds a little bit more depth to the sound that's it everything else is just eqing what i did to make it sit in the mix i've got a cut it around 300 hertz that's it nothing else to it so yeah i'll show you in the uh, track quick and this breakdown There you go, nice simple percussive house bass. So yeah, we're going to uh, solo this track. I'm going to initialize this patch. I'll show you how I made it step by step. So oscillator one, it's one of the virtual analog waveforms. It's a uh, pulse width mod. It's obviously not, yep, that one there, pulse width mod. Pull the pulse to saw all the way to the left, so it's a pulse. Pitch it down one octave, and then we're just going to offset it slightly to minus 11.97 just to detune it a bit with the pulse width round at 4 you're not going to hear it, it's that thin you're not going to hear it as we pull it round That's where I had it, about 10 o'clock on a clock dial. We'll route this only to filter one, I only use one filter on this sound. Um, so yeah, keep the mix all the way to the top for between the filters and keep the volume for filter one all the way up. We'll set the filter up later on. Oscillator two, I use something totally different. I use Chrome, this is one of my favorite waveforms on here. It is here, one of the digital hybrids. I'll solo this so you can hear it. Very electro y, but how I had it set up is uh, makes it sound a bit more housey. So I'll pitch this one down one octave as well. Off this, offset this one the other way, minus 12.02. I pull the amp down on this to about two o'clock. This gives it that really per percussive sort of click at the start of the sound. With a filter envelope that we do, closing it up over time, you're only going to hear this oscillator at the start of the notes. We're both together. Sounds very abrupt and very harsh at the minute, but uh, I say the envelope on the filter is going to tame that later on. Oscillator 3, I used a sine square. This is creating just the real sub elements of the sound. Wavetable all the way to the left, so it's just a pure sine wave. Pitch this one down one octave as well, minus 12. Amp for this, the same as oscillator 2, about 2 o'clock. Route this only to filter 1 as well. I didn't do anything with the uh, warp modes. Um, you don't get a choice when you do the pulse width, when you do a virtual analog waveform, and uh, keep these two on spectrum. So yeah, that's it for the oscillators. 
I didn't use any modulation oscillator, no noise generator, no feedback. I didn't use any of the two inserts at the bottom. The only effects I used were the master effects at the end of the chain. But for now, we're going to go ahead and set up uh, two envelopes. The main envelope is the main amp envelope, which is envelope four. All we want to do is just pull the level down slightly, just to give it a typical ADSR style envelope. And envelope two, this is one what's going to be doing all the automation. I'm going to use it to uh, modulate the filter cutoff and also the wavetable position for oscillator two. So we'll set this up quickly. And once quite a long ish attack, about 11 o'clock on a clock dial, decay dead center, level all the way around to maximum, and just give it a tiny bit more release than, than you get from its original position, about in between 9 and 10 o'clock on a clock dial. <laughs> You're not going to hear it affecting anything yet, that's because we haven't assigned it to anything. We're going to assign it to the wavetable position of Chrome Oscillator. And get it to push it round to the right. I'll solo this so you can hear what it's doing. The reason I did this is because, uh, cause, because of the filter envelope, what we're going to use later on, it, it cuts out the high aspects of the sound and only leaves you with the lower aspects towards the end of the notes. Uh, this wavetable position, when it was round there, was was a lot deeper, and it was you you were still going to hear some of this at that point, um, mainly by fluke, mainly by chance, and just play with it until it it sounded like it did. Okay, just the filter envelope now, and then we'll go on to the effects. So I use a standard low pass 2 filter. If anybody's seen any of my tutorials before, I do a lot of filter envelope modulation. Cut off, set it around to about 3 o'clock. Drag this crosshair. First modulation box for the cutoff. Pull it at almost round to ultimate zero, about 8 o'clock on a clock dial. Resonance all the way down to zero. We're going to use this just to flick the resonance around as well slightly. Just so you hear a tiny bit of resonance at the end of the sound. You can go crazy with the resonance if you want to taste. We'll assign in a macro. We'll assign a macro to that actually. We'll assign macro two to the resonance. Give it full way around. We'll call this resonance. Some people like a lot of resonance when they make these sort of basses. So now macro two has control over the resonance. We'll dial this down. You're not going to want to go much more than there, I would have thought. But again, when you're setting the macros up, up yourself, that's something you can do. Macro 1 is control over vibrato as standard, but we'll delete that. We'll rename this delay. We're going to use this later on to control the delay amount. Again, some people like a delay on a bass like this. I definitely do. We'll take the resonance off for now. Okay, yeah, so the two effects I use is a classic tube, which is a form of distortion. I had the dry wet at around 9 o'clock, the drive around 10 o'clock. I'll do a before and after again. That's without and with. Add a tiny bit of grit towards the start of the notes. And FX2, as you can tell, is a synced delay. Delay synced. I you set the ratio to 1 over 4. And then 1 over 8. Typical ping pong style. Keep the feedback where it is as standard and push the damping round to about one o'clock. I say we're going to assign macro one to this in case you want to use this. I always use a delay like this on, especially on a lot a percussive sort of house bass. I'll give people the option with this macro though. So drag this tiny little orange cross here, drop it in the first modulation box. You're not really going to go into want to go no more than ten o'clock. So now macro one has control over the delay.
That's pretty much the sound done now. We're just going to the round section. Click these two Bs, make sure this orange line flows all the way through, and it's going to go to effects one first, so we need to click this little white arrow here. That's it, that's the sound done, nice and simple. So these two macros, bit of resonance, bit of delay, you can play with it as you want. I really like it with that resonance in actually. I'm glad I decided to do that. But yeah, that's it. That's the patch done. I didn't know anything in the voicing section because it's a bass patch. Keep it one voice, keep it nice and mono. No pitch cut off, no wavetable position change. That's it. So I called this percussive house bass. I'll uh, show you it again. I'll show you it in this section as well so you can hear it flicking in and out of the, of the, the main bass. <laughs> And at the drop again. Right down, sorry. There you go, nice percussive house bass. So the only other external uh, processing I did was this one knob fat and a little bit tiny bit of overdrive. I've got a tiny bit of a resonant spike on this filter as well, which is modulated just earlier on in the track. Um, as always, this is a project file which you can download if you want it, you can have it for yourself. You have to email me direct and it is available to buy at 10 British pounds. I can send it to you via Dropbox. Um, you get everything that you see in this track. I'll do a link in the description to the full track workout where I made this so you can see how I made all these patches and how they were done mixed quickly into the track. So yeah, if you want to get hold of this, uh, get in touch with me, mrmfox22 at gmail.com. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check me out on uh, Twitter. It's Sound Design Tuts. Okay, cheers.